I'm travelling through Donegal, heading towards Belfast. I stop in at the Kilcooney Portal Tomb, which is believed to be 4,000 years older than Stonehenge. It is amazing to be in the presence of these Neolithic monuments, and marvel that the Stone Age people who built them had only just started farming land and domesticating animals. Since the lasting ceasefire in 1997, Belfast is a hive of activity with cranes littering the skyline in every direction. It's interesting to see that some of the last remnants of the troubles have become photo opportunities for tourists. I myself took a cab tour into West Belfast to view the murals and peace line wall now adorned with messages from around the world. To get an idea of how Belfast has changed, I spoke with well-known local photographer, Sean McKernan, who has documented Belfast from the height of the Troubles to its current day burgeoning social scene. Belfast Exposed project started in 1983, which was the, um, there was a lot of trouble going on. It was ahead of the Troubles in, 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 in Belfast. It was just after the 1981 hunger strike. And the idea behind it was to invite people from all over Belfast to give us their photographs, which would simply show their perspectives of life in Belfast, no matter what background they were from, Catholic, Protestant, dissenter. And it was a very, very successful exhibition. The idea behind it being that there was a lot of censorship in the north of Ireland, and people living here weren't really getting the opportunity to give their opinions of life in the city in terms of the, the broad media. And there was no censorship. You could show whatever you wanted. So we had the exhibition. It was very, very successful. It, we were invited to London and Geneva and then we got a small dark room and we started to train people in photography and it snowballed um, into a full team resource centre with a dark room, a gallery and we built up an archive of it stands at half a million photographs. I left the project in 2000 and the, the building that we are in now used, um, housed the old Belfast Exposed project. So for the past five years I have quite literally been, you know, had a sense, a new sense of freedom. Um, there's now a ceasefire in Ireland. Uh, the city is developing um, quite, quite quickly, there's buildings going up. I just decided to stay in this old building here and try and develop an independent project without any money from the public purse. Um, so we have musicians, we've got artists, uh, we run a small cafe, we run a, we run a club, we've got our dark room, our gallery, and, and it's been a bit of a struggle, but the, the, a lot of people um, appreciate what we're doing here, and they, they come and participate in, a, in all our projects. Oh, the, the thing that I like most about living in Belfast, I mean, quite simply, is the people. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy the people. Um, I appreciate what they've been through um, over, during the Troubles, um, during the 70s and the 80s, and now they're getting um, a sense of freedom, which they all deserve, Catholics, Protestants alike. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying watching the way people's lives are changing, the fact that they have more opportunities. And the type of photographs I take now 
they're not done for any funders they're not done for any projects I still do my street photography and um, I haven't been to a funeral outside a family in, in 10 years I haven't been to a rat I haven't been to you know, any of those events mainly because they're not happening and um, the work that I do is much more positive it's certainly people people are enjoying themselves Yeah, for me growing up, um, my kids sort of like, you know, would say to me, Daddy, what was it like in the old days? You know, and I ain't going like the old days were like maybe 15 years ago. You know, I'm not that old, I'm only 41. But I've got four kids. Um, the youngest is three, the oldest is 15. And um, the very fact that they're having to ask me what was it like during the troubles, I think it's great. The fact that they didn't live the experience that there. Our ambition when, like, when we were 16, our ambition was simply to get a job. It's great to see um, kids nowadays. I've got all these opportunities that we didn't have before. And hopefully in terms of what we're doing in the BX building, we can help um, further their, and help their, their ambitions in terms of the, in, in terms of arts. I think the, 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 the divide between Catholic and Protestants, I mean, it's been institutionalised and you're, you're looking at a divided society that goes back maybe 800 years. So it's never going to change in 10, 20 years. Um, I would see the next generation, you know, you know, my grandkids, will hopefully really benefit from um, uh, a, a society that's undivided. You know, the Catholic and Protestant thing here simply has to change. You know, it's a very, very small part of Europe. You know, there's like a million and a half people living in the north of Ireland. And um, I would be very, very confident that if the politicians seriously get their direct together, that we can live in a society where all people are equal. And, um, you know, I mean, that's still my ambition for, for myself, my children and my grandchildren. Um, I also feel that the fact that we have other cultures now coming to live in Belfast, that that will certainly help to break down the... The, the, the traditional divide and the society here between Catholics and Protestants.